<laughs> okay, so, um, yes, I'm close to feet. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> she's just like you guys. Um, so now we're going to talk about compression bandages. So there are two different types of bandages that we're going to mention in this video. There's long stretch and long stretch bandages um, are any bandage that essentially can stretch really far. So this is an old bandage and so it's all wrinkly and yucky looking and everything like that. But in order to be characterized as a long stretch bandage, um, it essentially means that from its resting position, which this one's lost some of its elasticity and its, its retract, retractile components. So it doesn't really go back to its normal resting position. But anyway, if it did, um, from its resting position, it's able to stretch out between 100 and 300%. Okay, so pretty, or excuse me, even more than that, 140 to 300%. Um, of its original resting length. So like an ACE bandage is your typical example of a, a long stretch bandage. Now a short stretch bandage, um, where a long stretch has a lot of elastic fibers, a short stretch is gonna contain um, less elastic fibers and more cotton fibers. And therefore its ability to stretch decreases and from its resting length, it only has the ability to stretch about 30 to 60%, um, which means that, that there's a lot more confinement, a lot more of keeping everything kind of where it's supposed to be, um, which comes in handy, especially if we're talking about edema or lymphedema when our patient is able to walk, okay? Um, so it's an example or a few examples of a short stretch would be um, uh, compilarin is a, a pretty common one. Um, they're the ones that we have at, at the school. And so again, hopefully when we get back, then we can show you those, those guys. But um, Rosadol is another one, Rosadol K. Um, and I think we, I think we have some of those as well, but. Uh, there really isn't much difference between the two. It's just a different brand. Um, if you're looking at the two, you probably wouldn't really know the difference if you haven't really worked with, with either of them very much. Um, I can't really tell the difference, I'll be honest with you. Um, so a, a short re a short stretch bandage is, or system a lot of times they call it, is used for like a venous stasis ulcer um, to manage that. Sometimes if it's bad enough, you might actually find that uh, they'll use Coban, which really has, has um, very tensile component to it. And so a lot of times if they're trying to, if they can't like create a, a straight Uniboot type thing, then they might end up using some, uh, some Coban just because it can, it can be a little bit more rigid. Um, Okay, so the difference and why, when would we use, so we already mentioned that, that short would be used for like a, a venous stasis ulcer or some venous insufficiency. Um, typically, well, up until a few years ago, and I say a few five to 10 years ago, um, they, they thought that well, they used long stretch bandages a lot more than they they should have been. Um, and they found that, especially when we're talking about lymphedema um, or some pretty bad edema, then that short stretch is much more appropriate and get better effects from it. Um, and one of the reasons is because with that short stretch bandage, you have what's called a high working pressure, okay? Um, and all this means is that if a, if a bandage has high working pressure, it means that whenever there's pressure pushed against the bandage, it doesn't let a whole lot of movement occur. Um, so what happens is that the, you get this outward pressure, the bandage doesn't stretch, and so then it pushes everything back in. And so you get 
more of a, a, a tighter contract contractile type um, effect from it. Um, and it's this force of getting a lot of force going outwards and then an equal um, or close to equal amount of force pushing back in, it actually simulates that muscle pump even more. Um, and especially if our patient is able to get up and is ambulatory while they are being treated for edema or lymphedema, then you can have greater effects. And so anytime your patient is able to walk, you're gonna typically be wrapping them with a, a short, stretch, short stretch bandage, just because of the fact that that force is actually helping push the blood and get that venous return back up to the heart. Um, with a long stretch, long stretch have high resting pressure, which resting pressure is the inward force of that bandage that um, is exerted on the, the limb at rest. So because of the fact that you have this really stretchy and highly, well, highly stretchable fibers, um, it means that there can be more compression or ends up being more compression if they're not moving. So if they're moving and they're walking, you're gonna get more compression and more force from a short stretch. But if they're moving and walking, then because of the fact that you don't have that, um, well, because of the fact that the bandage stretches so much, it's not gonna create a whole lot of pressure back in and, and simulate that, uh, that muscle pump. Um, and so with uh, the long stretch, typically you'll use that just for like um, acute injuries. So like an acute ankle sprain or something along those lines where we maybe just want to help with um, controlling any swelling or edema that might be going on. But we're not necessarily, we, we still want to allow that to swell as part of, of the healing process. Um, it hasn't gotten out of control or anything like that. And so we don't need to put a lot of force onto it and, and get a lot of that inward force. Um, okay. So a few things to remember when we're talking about wrapping, um, and bandaging. First thing, always go distal to proximal. So if we're not going distal to proximal, then we're not pushing the fluid in the, the correct direction. So with, a, say, a lower limb, a leg, then you're always going to start as close to the toes as you can. You won't wrap the toes. You'll go around that the, the met head of one through five, but you won't actually wrap the toes. It's kind of the same thing with the hand. Um, with the hand, you'll start and wrap around the palm, and then wrap around the thumb, and so you end up looking like this, right? If it's bad enough and goes down into the fingers, then a lot of times you'll have individual wraps for each one of the fingers. Just makes it a lot easier instead of trying to use this, and you're not gonna wrap all the fingers together because then we're not getting equal amount of pressure throughout the fingers, okay? Um, I only have, I didn't grab um, long stretch, or excuse me, short stretch bandages before um, they shut down the campus and so I only have long stretch so I'll show you with this but really the wrapping principles and the, the technique is going to be the same regardless of if you're using a, uh, a long stretch or a short stretch. So again go distal to proximal um, as far as your pressure okay so we want more pressure at the distal end and less pressure at the pro proximal end. Um, make sure that you don't have like if you have a good gradient where you're a good amount of pressure down here at the distal end and you work up and you're getting less and less and less and then all of a sudden right here you get a you know a four inch spread where your compression um, increases well then we're going to get a tourniquet effect and everything's just going to stay right there and we don't want that and so make sure you have a good gradient throughout the entire thing so distal proximal next figure eight why a figure eight instead of just wrapping, 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 doing a straight spiral? Well, because of the fact that a figure eight, with a figure eight, you can actually control your gradient a lot better. Um, with just a standard spiral wrap, 
It actually increases the possibility and a lot of times people just get excited and they get in too much of a groove and you end up with tight, loose, tight, loose, tight. So you get multiple spots where you're gonna get a tourniquet effect and you lose that gradient. So it's a lot harder to maintain that gradient um, when you're doing a spiral and so you, you utilize that figure eight. Um, every time you wrap, after you finish wrapping, um, so if I were to, well, I'll just show you, okay? Um, but you're always gonna check the circulation after you finish the wrap. So I'll start down here. Again, I'm not gonna go beyond those met heads. And I may, for the first couple, do a, a, a spiral wrap, but then as soon as I can, I'm gonna get into my figure eight, okay? And by the time you finish, you should end up with a pretty nice looking little herringbone pattern, okay? And that herringbone, ah, these are old bandages and so they don't like to stay taut where they're supposed to stay, stay taut. So there you go, okay? So that's, that's this herringbone pattern where we cross back and forth. That, that's our, our herringbone or our figure eight, okay? So now I ended right there, but let's say I wanna keep going up the calf and I could take some tape, tape it off there, grab another bandage, and then I may go around just once so that I can catch the beginning of this bandage, but then I'm gonna essentially just take off right where that other bandage left off and go in my my figure eight pattern okay and again the pressure and i would probably just let's say i i've gone far enough i need to just stop there okay um so we've got a decent herringbone pattern going um, and if i want to check my pressure i just whoop. no another piece of tape stay okay um, I'm not a huge fan of the clips especially if you're not gonna have a lot of layers now if this was some pretty hefty lymphedema and maybe I had some batting underneath so I had maybe like two other um, two other layers underneath this then I, I could use the clips just because the the clips, they got those little prongs and they'll dig in and they'll just <laughs> can tear somebody's flesh pretty easily and we don't want that. Um, if there were enough layers, again, you can get away with it. But a lot of times if I'm just doing a simple bandage like this, then I'll, I'll use tape. Um, and if I need to, I'll just take and tape all the way around. So that way it adheres to itself and isn't trying to just like this stuff. Granted, it's old tape. But... Um, so if I want to check my um, gradient, then I can just come along and flip. Good crap. <laughs> and just tuck it. Get a little tuck there. So I can just come and flip each one of my little herringbone things. And not the greatest. I wouldn't be terribly happy with this if it was a real patient. Um, but my gradient, my gradient is pretty decent. Um, it would be enough that I've got good pressure here and it slowly gets lighter and lighter as we go up. Now, I do that, I finish, and then I'm going to come and check my patient's circulation. And unfortunately, the best way to check circulation down here is by pinching their toes um, and checking that capillary refill, just like you guys know how to do and you've done with the fingers. Um, so you're going to check patient circulation, have them walk around or at least sta stand and do some marching to make sure everything is comfortable, that everything is going to stay where it's supposed to be. Um, and then you don't have to worry about that. And then again, just keeping in mind, uh, are we trying to get working pressure out of this? Um, if so, we're going to use that short stretch. If we are trying to get more of a, a, a resting pressure, then we're going to do a long stretch um, and allow that limb to, to get a little bit bigger and, and not have as high of force coming back um, 
to simulate that uh, that muscle pump. Okay, um, if you have ace bandages at home, then give your wrapping skills um, a go and and try and get them nice and honed before we we all come back to uh, to class. Um, and that way we can just fly through this stuff and get you guys up to speed and everything where you're supposed to go. Okay. Um, again, hopefully you guys are staying safe and doing what you're supposed to. And tell you what, every time we talk as uh, instructors, we we miss you guys. Can't wait until all this is has blown over and we can get back to things being a little bit more normal. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.